if you hear a bopping or a that type of noise that is Callie hitting my computer with her balloon today I will be walking you through a beginner woodworking project uh, that I actually failed at <laughs> so that will be interesting and I partnered up with my friends for the last hurrah of our perspective program with Home Depot if we are going to break this down into the most basic of terms, essentially what you wanna do is cut out one piece of wood that is your backing, which will be how big you want this piece to be. And then you want four smaller sides that are gonna be attached on the sides by glue and a nail gun that are gonna be the depth of what you want your planter to be, since this is going to be like a little wall succulent planter situation. If you just clicked on this video and you're seeing me using heavy duty clamps and a nail gun, it's because I've progressed to get to this level. So just keep in mind that you need to start where you can start. If you have a power drill, some drill bits, you can drill pilot holes, use screws to secure, you're gonna need a lot of them. You also can do your tried and true wood glue, hammer and nails. It's just gonna be a little bit more tedious. A common mistake I used to make when I first started woodworking was not compensating for the thickness of my wood when framing something out. So you see how those longer pieces are completely flush with the backing of the wood? Well, that means it's not gonna be the same for the pieces that are shorter on the bottom. You actually need to add the width or the thickness of your wood, sorry, to each side to compensate to go across the entire thing. I wouldn't recommend wood puttying everything in sight, but when you are a beginner to woodworking, wood putty is your best friend. You'll get better as the days goes on and you practice more and more. I personally like to get the pink wood putty that turns natural so you know when it's completely dry, so you can come back in with a damp cloth or sand it down, it's totally up to you, but you can remove this wood putty with just water. I personally am going to be sanding it down because I actually used cedar fence posts left over from the backyard makeover last week to do the trim of this succulent wall box and I wanted to, it to look a little bit more smooth. You always, 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 always want to make sure that you're wiping all of the debris free from the material that you're working with if you're sanding. I don't care what it is because if you're painting it, sealing it, or just going over it with stain or paint, you will see all those little granules, the little bumpies, and they are so annoying. It can be with a cheesecloth, it can be with a shop cloth. I personally like to use like t-shirts and then rewash them so I can reuse them. Like I just said with the whole like taking the debris away from all the materials that you're sanding, you also want to make sure you are properly sealing the materials that you are working with. So if it's wood and it's going outside, you want an exterior finish, which you can find at your local Home Depot or whatever kind of woodworking hardware store of your choosing. They're gonna have it. Just make sure you're looking for interior or exterior. They are different. I will be using a crystal clear satin because I do like that flatter finish. For the back of the box, because I don't want anything to be like growing out of the woodworks, literally out of the crevasses of the frame, I'm going to be lining it with some weed liner that I have left over from my backyard makeover, which I just did with you guys the other week. I'm going to staple that nice and secure with a staple gun to the edges and to the bottom to make sure it's nice and flat, then pick the succulents of my choosing. <laughs> almost losing my camera are you kidding me anyways I filled that up with soil and I didn't have enough but I didn't need to purchase another bag so what I did was use the soil from all the succulents that I bought and mix that into the soil I was using for the entire thing and filled that sucker up you can almost look at me like a de-dirting the succulents because we're going to be adding some wire to the top of this in order to hold the succulents in place and we need to just shimmy them through those holes so it is a good thing to actually go through and kind of just get all the dirt off of the roots of these succulents i also laid them out in color coordination because i'm crazy and i wanted to do a little bit of a gradient if i could with what i had on hand and i really liked how it was turning out I personally grab some wire with the smallest holes possible and then grab my metal pliers to have on hand to open up those holes for the roots of the succulents versus buying wire that was way too big and then trying to put the small succulents into this and it not holding. I thought it was much smarter to go with the smaller, whoa, smaller holes. <laughs> and then I just cut off the excess, stapled it to the actual frame of this box, if you will, and then we're going to move forward with the fun part. Okay, Instagram versus reality. Anytime I've 
seen this. People are making it look so easy. The succulents all stay in place. No, not even the case. The first succulent I put through fell out immediately. So I came back and just like grinded in whatever soil I had up until it was the utmost full. And that's when these succulents started sticking. And I don't think people tell you that. So I will be the first to tell you, you gotta fill this thing with so much soil to make sure that these things even have a chance at grabbing. You can also see here that the succulents with the larger roots, I went in and opened it up in order to put them into place nice and securely. Again, something else that none of these people tell you, this takes way more succulents than I anticipated. And also don't get the long stringy ones. You need flat, smooth ones that will make this thing look great. To fill the space because I did not want to buy any more succulents, I went in with some faux moss that I got at a craft store and just kind of used the different greens and even purples to bring this gradient that I envisioned together. I am also adding Irish moss, and I forget what this moss is called, but I am adding it in hopes it will grow around where I'm leaving the negative space because I don't really want to overwhelm this thing since I do want to give it a chance to actually like live in the space I am creating for it, just like all my other makeovers actually. I decided to hot glue some faux moss down and add, not a quote, just a word, because where it's gonna be sitting in the backyard makeover will make a lot of sense when you see it. Um, but I thought this was a little fun and quirky addition to what I've normally seen. As I always say, it is not my way or the highway, but this time it is because I'm putting high as a little word because I think it's cute. It's going to be above a little entertaining area. And if it's just like, hey, or hi, or oh, hey, I didn't know exactly what to do, but I thought just a simple hi would suffice. Go ahead and do whatever kind of word quote you want on there. The reason you see me adding purples is because the landscaping in the back is going to be adding some purple and bluish tones throughout, which you will see again when I put it out there. This is what it's looking like so far. I obviously didn't frame it out because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but your girl wanted to get a little frisky and work with some metal and cut it down with my circular saw, which sounds absolutely terrifying to me, but I wanted to share my first go. I am not going to be getting crazy cutting down all these types of metals quite yet, but I am going to be dabbling into Diablo's teeth metal cutting saw blades, in particular the 6.5 inch 48 TPI steel demon saw blade, which sounds so intense, but it really was not at all. All of these guys have tri-metal shock resistant blazing, which allows metal cutting carbide tips to withstand extreme impact for maximum durability, which means when you cut this piece of metal, you guys, it really isn't that intimidating because it goes through like butter. They also, all the three that I just showcased, have advanced laser cut thin kerf blades to give extremely fast effortless cuts in cordless saws, which you can see here in slow motion. It's kind of insane the lack of spark that it caused. I was anticipating like a ton of spark. I don't know, just because it's like what I saw in the movies when I was younger, because I've never personally used them. And I was pleasantly surprised when that wasn't the case because it makes me want to get into metalworking a little bit. Even though this does look like, what the hell, she's cutting metal, absolutely not, I'm never gonna do that. Honestly, it felt no different than cutting wood. I hyped myself up so much before and got so nervous right when I started going through the piece of metal that when I actually went through it, I kind of laughed at myself and just sat there and was like, Rachel, all this stuff isn't as scary as it seems as long as you just try. The other thing I do have to mention, because it's something I've experienced with um, just blades in general, that there is a non-stick perma shield coating that reduces gumming, rusting, and corrosion, which means that shield just makes your life a lot easier with these blades. <laughs> Go ahead and come at me, bro. This is my first time working with metal, and what's gonna adhere it to the wood, you say? Oh, just some crazy Gorilla super glue adhesive that I just put along all the edges and then used my heavy duty clamps to clamp it down real nice and tight. I have never messed with ratchet sets. They've always just kind of been like a mechanics tool to me. So I thought I would use it to anchor this piece into the outside of the house by using Husky's 144 tooth ratchet set, which is a three piece, or you can do the 144 position, one inch and a quarter and three eighths and a quarter drive mechanics tool set, which is 125 pieces. <laughs> no wonder it's overwhelming for me. I originally was gonna hang this piece up by a DIY wood cleat 
that I can leave a link for you down below. It's basically a piece of wood cut at a 45 degree angle and then I was going to anchor it into the house. But then I started realizing how this wasn't working. <laughs> the things just ripped right out of the wall and also how like deep that anchor is. If that thing is hanging up against the wall, there's going to be, it's going to be lifted off of that wall so much and it would leave a huge shadow and a gap and I just, it just was not working out for your girl. Plus I hung it wrong. Look at that. It would have slid <laughs> right off. A complete side note to both ratchet sets, they have a lifetime warranty with no questions, no receipt required. So that's also a really rad thing about these things. But if I'm being completely honest, I genuinely need to learn what I'm gonna be using these for with my pops. The 125 piece set though, even though I have totally failed using it here, it does come with two ratchets, 115 sockets, 43 which are deep and 72 which are standard. And then on top of that, it has eight other accessories. Clearly that didn't work for a lot of reasons and if it hung up, I probably wouldn't mind it, but just because how deep that cleat is, I just think it would have looked funky. So I opted for something on the thinner side that was already pre-made and I didn't have to get crazy and I've linked it down below for you guys. And it holds, I think I got one that holds 61 pounds and that's way more than what this planter is. You just want some love? <laughs> there are different anchors for different materials as well as different weights. So even though it's weird standing in the aisle and you kind of feel lost, just sit there and stare and do the research or even Google them, whatever you want to do. Make sure you are buying the proper anchors for your project. This cleat system is cool because this will hang up on the wall permanently. You hang this little piece up on what you want to hang onto it. And that was me weight testing, <laughs> ending up hurting my fingers. Uh, and it will just securely stay on the wall, which I love. Are you? You. How did I not notice this until legitimately right now? So don't do what I did. Cut it out of 45. <laughs> Thank God I got those blades. As far as getting those shots, I don't think I ever really show you guys a process of organizing the final shots. And I just wanted to show you this one since it's, it was a simple one project to shoot an overlay of. I actually use a ladder you've seen before on my Pilates makeover that I did with my best friends. This is the Gorilla Ladder that is five and a half feet. It's dual platform ladder with a bucket tray, which comes in way handy. It holds all my items. Specifically when I'm shooting stuff like this, it holds all my cameras. So I don't have to keep getting up and down or worrying about them falling out. I said beginner woodworking, but it's really like beginner tools. I know a ladder seems so small, but it really isn't. I own multiple and some of them are so heavy that I just don't want to use them and compromise my shot. This guy is a professional grade aluminum construction that is lightweight, but it holds up to tough use. Also has dual standing platforms, which means it has three times the step depth of a traditional step ladder. And I think right now Holly has three step ladders in the house and this one is just gonna obliterate those three and replace them completely. <laughs> It is so weird showing you guys like the behind the scenes of me shooting. I genuinely do not like being on camera, but if you guys are interested in anything that I talked about today, I have linked it down below for you. Another thing that people doing this tutorial do not tell you, or at least the ones that I read didn't tell me, is you can't just hang this guy up right away. You have to let it sit for a while for all the succulents to root. That way, when you hang it up, not all of them fall right out. Yeah, so a lot went wrong, but that's what happens when you start to learn something new. Also are completely worn out on deadlines, you guys. I know everything has been all over the place for the last couple months, but August, I promise you, we are gonna be feeling just fine and dandy with large scale projects, better edits, and just insane sponsors that are here to support your girl on her dream of buying her own house soon to flip it with you guys here on this channel. I am so insanely grateful for your guys' patience and also for your guys' consistency and support no matter what I'm uploading and I know I say that fairly often but it's because mentally I'm just not all there as annoying as the couple mistakes were on my behalf obviously I'm still learning I can't even believe I didn't notice this when I put this <laughs> this on but whatever what are you gonna do but i'm really stuck with how this turned out you guys are so good at tweaking my diys to work for you so obviously you know that you don't have to do the metal frame you can do wood basic wood on top of that and it'll work just fine i just wanted to chic it up just a little bit we are currently in the process of making over the house and that's gonna go right there so you will see that in that full transformation with home depot
Oh man, it is like midnight on my 30th all-nighter, I feel like. But I do have to say, I feel like I'm finally coming out of this fog and I cannot wait for my mentality, my edits, my work ethic to all reflect what I truly want to do project-wise. So stay tuned. I'll see you soon for another DIY.